another crochet tutorial video. So today I wanted to do a little video on how to make these fun checkerboard style cushions. So these are actually super simple to make if you're just starting out. It's quite a fun way to practice like the checkerboard pattern. I know this took me a while to get used to, especially like with the colour switching. So it's quite a nice way to practice because effectively the pattern is just two rectangles. Um, and you could do this with like lots of other different colours. You could do like one colourway on one side, the other colourway on another side. I just stuck with a plain white back and a checkerboard front because I was worried I didn't have enough of the red yarn. Um, so yeah, let me know if you make this. I'd love to see if you do tag me in anything. Um, and yeah, I hope this makes sense. Feel free to leave any questions below and I will reply. To get started, you will need two colours of cotton yarn. I use around 150 grams and you'll also need a 5.5mm crochet hook. I started by measuring my cushion. The ones I'm using are 50 by 30 centimetres. You can make any you like, you just need to make sure that the chain is an even number and the correct length. So I started by doing a slip knot and then worked out for my length, I need to do 68 chains plus two for the turning stitch, but I'll get to that later. So starting with 68 chains. Um, essentially you want to ensure that your chain covers the whole length of the cushion and then we're going to work up the shorter side for the whole cushion. I'm gonna to skip to the end now, so I'll meet you there. You might just want to check that the length is correct here, but then we're going to start on the double crochet checkerboard pattern. So now we're going to chain the first plus two, and then we're essentially going to skip these first two chains that we've just made and work into the third chain from the hook. This is going to become the turning stitch. We do this by yarning over the hook, inserting into the chain, and then we're going to pull through the first loop then we're going to yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, pull through two. So that makes our first stitch. We're going to continue this for four chains now um, to create the checkerboard pattern, which works in chains of four. Now, once we're in the fourth stitch, we're going to switch colours. So we're going to do this by doing exactly the same as before. So inserting the hook into the yarn, if I can do that, yarning over, pulling through the first loop, yarning over, pulling through the second two, and then we've got two loops on our hook. Picking in the second colour can be a little bit fiddly. I should have done a slip knot here, so it's a bit tighter on the hook, but essentially you just want to make sure that the white becomes the main colour on the hook. So we're going to pull through those last two in the double crochet stitch. You want to make sure that we are always carrying through both colours as this will make it easier to colour switch. So on the first double crochet, like the first loop, we are always going to loop through both of these colours and carry on the double crochet as normal after that. This will ensure that both colours are constantly running through the stitch behind, if that makes sense. So we're going to carry that pattern on for four. I'll work that again, making sure that the chains are always like running parallel from the colours. So you're going to loop over then work into the next chain, yarn over, pulling through both of those colours and the chain there. So then we've got three on our hook, yarn over, pull through two, then yarn over, pull through the last two. So it can be a little bit fiddly as you get used to it, but as you go, you'll kind of get used to it. So yarn over, pull through both those colours in the chain, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And you're gonna carry that on in groups of four for the checkerboard pattern. Once you get to the last stitch in the fourth double crochet, we're gonna introduce the second color. So switching the red to the front again, yarning over for the last stitch. So swapping that color out. And then you're gonna carry on as normal doing the double crochets, but you switched your second color to the front. Now we're at the end, you're going to want to do exactly the same for the last stitch, yarning over, pulling through both colours in the chain, yarn over, and then pulling through the next two. And then you've got the last two chains on there, and then we're gonna swap out the colour again for the other one, swapping that out onto the chain, yarning over, pulling through those both. And then for the turning stitch, we're gonna to wanna to do two chains, and then we will turn our work, and then continue the pattern as we were. Here we're doing exactly the same as beforehand, so yarning over, putting into the first stitch, so you've got the first two loops on there of the first stitch and the yarn that you're working with. Pull through two, pull through two, then we yarn over again. You'll want to pull your work tight as you go. Pull through, pull through, and then pull through. 
So I'm kind of keeping the yarn I'm working with parallel as I go, just to make sure that it's like constantly there and a bit easier to scoop. But you're gonna carry on and then once you get to the last double crochet, you're going to introduce the second color again, pulling that through, yarning over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, pull through two. That's pretty much it for the whole of the front of the cushion and you just want to carry that on for the total length of your cushion. So for me that was 22 rows but obviously yours could be slightly different depending on the size. Now you can either carry this on and do it another panel exactly the same for the back or you can change up doing a different style, different pattern. I decided to do it a plain back so I will show you how to do that next. And really annoying when working with two colours is that the threads can get super duper tangled so it's always really good to make sure that you're like keeping the colour that you're working with in front um, and making sure as you go it doesn't get tangled up but I feel like I'm quite a lazy crochet because I just don't I don't always do that and then as you can tell it gets super tangled up so that is just a little tip So for the back cushion I did exactly the same as for the front, I started off by chaining 68 and then I also did a plus 2 to make the turning stitch and for this we basically again are just doing the bottom row and then working our way up to make the whole of the back panel. This is a super simple double crochet, just exactly the same as the front stitch but with no colour changing so it works a little bit quicker this time. I love this stitch because it works so quickly, but I've just finished my back panel here. And next up, basically, we just have to sew the two rectangle shapes together. So I'm gonna do that by using my crochet hook just to stitch the two together, going along both sides of the longer edges and then the top shortest edge. Then I'm gonna flip it inside out, pop the cushion inside and then sew along the final edge. Of course, we need to sew in all of these front ends as well but I'll do that first. Here you can see I've made a start on crocheting these two panels together. So to do this, you basically want to do a slip knot and get your yarn on the hook. And then you want to put your yarn through both stitches, yarn over and pull through both stitches. So you're basically just doing like slip stitches to attach the both. And on the edges where you've got stitches like the top panels, it's a little bit easier because you're just putting the crochet hook through both of those um, double crochets but on the edges it can be a bit difficult because you haven't got the stitches it's like the side of the stitches but you basically just want to look for any gaps so that you can crochet and sew them together it's quite simple once you get into the knack of it and it's a super fun quick way I find it a little bit quicker than doing it with a needle Once you've completed those three edges, you're gonna to wanna to turn your cushion inside out. This is obviously the super fun part because you get to see it all coming together. As you can tell, I decided to be a little bit lazy and not crochet in all of my loose ends, but I figured if it's gonna be inside out, nobody's gonna see those loose ends. Here I'm putting the cushion inside of the cushion cover and it's all starting to come together. Don't worry if it's a little bit tough to get it on just because the cotton has stretch obviously which will give it that kind of filled out look and which we like. Then I'm just going to crochet along the last edge. I decided to do the same stitch as before so literally just slip stitching and sewing them together. But obviously you could always do like a more neater stitch if you wanted it to look like that. But to be honest you can't really tell once the cushion is together and in place. So guys, now we're coming to the end and I've just sewn up the final edge here and I'm literally just going to pull through the yarn and cut the end and tie it in so it's nice and neat. <laughs> 